Hi, I'm Bill Ferguson, Chairman of the Board of Overland Park Chamber of Commerce and President and CEO of Central Bank of the Midwest. I'm excited to welcome you to this year's State of the City event. While I think we all miss gathering in one room to talk about the state of our community, coming together virtually means there's no limit to the number of people who can join us today. I'm excited about that. The Chamber exists to make Overland Park prosper. We're fortunate to have numerous corporate partners and sponsors who invest in our mission to make Overland Park the best place to build a business, a career, and a home. Today's program is sponsored by our friends at St. Luke's Health System. We appreciate their team for being a corporate sponsor and for making today's program possible. And now, a word of thanks to each of you. 2020 was a tough year, and in some way, we were all on the front lines of something we'd never experienced. Thank you for continuing to serve your customers in person or remotely through Zoom, for pivoting to a new business model, for reimagining your product to serve a virtual customer, or helping kids with remote school while running your business. And if your front line was providing healthcare, teaching, or delivering essential products and services, we are grateful to each of you. 2020 taught us many new lessons, brought us together, and made us collectively stronger. Times of crisis require bold leaders. For the past 16 years, we've had such a leader in Mayor Carl Gerlach. In his 10 years on the council and 16 years as mayor of Overland Park, Carl Gerlach has been committed to a quality of life built on public safety, infrastructure, great jobs, education, arts and recreation, and a balanced tax structure. The chamber is proud to call him our partner and friend as we continue working together to build on Overland Park's history and envision an even brighter future. And now, your mayor and your state of the city. For the first time in 50 years, the Kansas City Chiefs are Super Bowl champions. Here's an out, Sanders down the field. This view from News Chopper 9 shows you the drive-through COVID-19 testing clinic in Olathe. All K-12 schools are closed for the rest of the year in the state of Kansas. Hospitals can be overwhelmed within weeks. I would encourage you to stay at home, and together we can make a difference. But I just knew this is going to be big, and this is not going to be good. The virus forced businesses across the country to close their doors. The committee voted, and the vote was to not open outdoor pools. The Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead in Overland Park will stay closed until 2021. We have shots fired just east along 23rd and Antioch. We are covering the tragic story of Officer Mosier this morning. Law enforcement from across the area are here consoling one another and his family. Hundreds of people were showing up there just to pay their respects. This is the last call for Officer Mike Mosier. That's 917. Black Lives Matter organizers take their message to the suburbs. All people of color are welcome and safe in Overland Parks. A major development of the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. Doses of the Pfizer vaccine should arrive this week in both Kansas and Missouri. The line of cars at 87th and Antioch seems endless. Hey, God. Thank you. What the Parker family is doing here is really what helps make Overland Park one of the very top cities in the United States. Family survived. It was a fight. Your battle's not over, even when you live through COVID. We know that we are handed a miracle. We know that we were given this gift. Greetings and welcome. Wow, what a year it has been. At this time, I would usually express my appreciation to the officials and staff members of the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce, allowing me this outstanding opportunity. And I will. But before I do that, I would like to express 
my sincere gratitude and heartfelt admiration to the many essential frontline people in Overland Park and metropolitan Kansas City who have given their all to serve, care, and save those afflicted by this global pandemic. Make no mistake, COVID-19 is real. It has been felt and dealt with by our community, this state, and this great nation. My appreciation includes medical care professionals who work tirelessly for hours, days, and even months, and still do, whether in an emergency room, an ICU, hospital room, doctor's office, rehab, long-term care or assisted living facility, or at home or elsewhere. It also includes educators who, while on a wild roller coaster ride of changes, showed patience, professionalism, and dedication to teach our knowledge-starved children, whether in person, virtually, or both. Another special group of individuals who responded to assist include the men and women of the city's operational departments. This includes police and fire personnel, public works facilities, parks and recreation, court services, community services, convention center staff, information technology, and so many more. It also includes our local heroes, such as grocery store employees, ensuring availability of food and household goods, food service employees at restaurants, and delivery service personnel providing needed items to our homes and businesses. Many took extraordinary protective measures to support our community, our lives, and our local businesses. The list is endless of all those who were and are still critical in this fight that we face. Each individual did this, not for personal gain, but for the good deed itself. To all of you I've mentioned, and to those that I have not, please know I wish I could personally meet and greet each and every one of you, shake your hand, pat you on the back, and say, thank you. You mean so much to all of us. Your efforts are above and beyond. This week, I issued a proclamation designating Sunday, March 7th through Saturday, March 13th as Heroes Week. Lastly, I think it important to take a moment and remember those who lost the battle with COVID and pray for peace and grace for their grieving family members and friends. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to get a COVID vaccine when you have the opportunity. You will help protect yourself and so many others. Thank you for taking time to watch and listen to the annual State of the City. This year's event is understandably different. Your health and safety are paramount in our decision and actions, so we are bringing this message to you virtually. Bill, thank you for the introduction. Welcome, everyone. I want to extend a personal thank you to St. Luke's Health System for being today's sponsor. I also would like to thank the Overland Park Chamber Board of Directors, President and CEO of the Chamber, Tracy Osborne Olchin, and her entire staff for adapting today's program. I want to thank you for your kindness and support. I would also like to thank City Manager Bill Ebel and his team, Meg Ralph, Jason Rhodes, and Sean Riley, and others who contributed. Local government serves best because it's closest to the people. Your council is at the heart of that through their service to the community. Serving as your city's top elected official is truly a supreme honor that brings me immeasurable pride, joy, and satisfaction. Today, I want each and every one of you in Overland Park to know that you have my continuing commitment to work hard I will do everything in my power to preserve our quality of life and bring prosperity to all. If there's one word that I hear throughout our community these days, it's simply this, unity. We don't have to agree on everything. We can differ on policy, even disagree on funding and programs, but I know we all do agree on one thing. We want Overland Park to be a prosperous, 
and high caliber community. This means that together we must strive for understanding, civility, respect, and knowledge toward our common purpose, which is to make Overland Park the city of choice for people and businesses to live and invest in. There is so much collaboration in our community, people who are innovating and working hard to succeed. Their strength arises from an indomitable force, a fierce determination, an irreversible faith that the path forward is clear. Together we have overcome many challenges as a family and as a community. There will be even more challenges ahead on our relentless pursuit of success. Former U.S. astronaut and fighter pilot Michael Collins once said, any pilot knows from the ready room fable or bitter experience that the length of the runway behind him or her is the most useless measurement they can take. It's what's up ahead that matters. In Overland Park, it's what lies before us that demands our immediate attention and decisive action. 2021 is our year to renew hopes and dreams and achievements. Overland Park is a community that leads, leads with integrity, leads by example, leads with facts, leads strategically, leads by inclusion, and leads with vision. And Overland Park offers compassion, purpose, dialogue, opportunity, hope, and unity in times of need. That unity was clear last May. We lost one of our own. It's a phone call that you never want to get. Uh, this is something that uh, we're, we're not used to this. Heartbreak for local law enforcement and the Overland Park community tonight. After the learned Overland Park police officer Mike Mosier died in a shootout minutes away from... That suspect in the hit and run had a gun shot at the officer. The officer shot back. Both people ended up dying, but we spoke to the police chief here. Sometimes that victory comes at the ultimate cost. This was his calling. All he ever wanted to do was be a police officer. He died doing what he loved. All of these police cars line the street all the way down to Metcalf. The funeral is set to begin in moments inside the Overland Park Convention Center. To all of the citizens of Overland Park, my dad is with you. He is watching over you, making sure that you are safe. Because he risked his life and gave his life to protect you. And he would do it all over again. He gave his life for the community to stop a situation that was probably going to end up much, much worse. And that's what he was willing to die for. He cared about us, he cared about the community, he cared about his police officers, but he put that caring into action. He would probably look at this situation and go, yeah, thanks for everything, thanks for the flowers, thanks for everything, but um, I'm fine, I'm in a better place, get back to work. I'm, I'm still gonna be with you even though you may not be able to see me. To the entire Mosier family, thank you. Thank you for sharing Mike with Overland Park. He will be forever remembered, forever missed. In January, the City Council unanimously approved renaming a stretch of 123rd Street from Medcalf West to Blue Valley Parkway, Mike Mosier Boulevard. 
This portion of the roadway is adjacent to the W. Jack Sanders Justice Center, the police station Mike reported from. We will replace the current street signs this spring. We also lost a longtime community leader and former council member Terry Goodman. Terry was a professional colleague, a friend, and a champion for the city. He served many years in several different leadership roles, working to enhance the quality of life for all. He will be greatly missed. To the Goodman family, I also thank you for sharing Terry and supporting his role as a trusted community leader. To our local businesses and families, I support you, and so does this community. This city embodies charity through compassion and wonderful work. That kindness and love make Overland Park above and beyond. Through two rounds of funding late last year into 2021, city officials are distributing nearly $1.2 million of federal CDBG relief funds to small businesses and households. These funds provide rent, mortgage, and utility assistance to struggling local families impacted by the pandemic, and rent and mortgage assistance to our small businesses who need help to recover. Our residents and business owners come from all corners of the world, farms, small towns, major metropolitan cities, different countries and continents. Some of you were even raised right here, just like me. We are a patchwork of different souls different backgrounds and different viewpoints who have come together and formed this community of Overland Park. We have that in common, something around which we can unify. Our work is to bring people from across this great nation to experience an Overland Park that welcomes and includes all. This is part of our ongoing effort to build a world-class community. This is an effort that must continue. Late last year, the National Human Rights Campaign awarded us the highest score Overland Park has ever received, 93 points out of 100. HRC recognizes communities across the nation for municipal laws, policies, programs, and services that include and protect the LGBTQ community. We had the highest score among the state's five most populated cities. But it doesn't end there. Forward OP, our community-driven long-term vision plan, is actively proceeding with implementation. Our initial emphasis is on well-being, which we heard frequently mentioned as a priority in surveys and public meetings. This is even more important now, as the pandemic has caused increasing concerns about mental health in our community. Here's Ward 6 Councilmember Chris Newland to share more. Thank you, Mayor. The Mental Health Task Force appointed by the City Council has been meeting for more than a year now to tackle this important issue. This dedicated group of legal and mental health professionals, community advocates like JOCO United, and business leaders are working to assess mental health services and resources available in our community. To my fellow task force members, thank you for your research, insight, and education into this critical topic. This is a prevalent and real issue for all residents, including our children. Our police department responds to seven calls a day on average related to individuals experiencing some level of mental health distress. The task force recommendations will help our community navigate the patchwork of services offered by our federal, state, and local agencies that are currently insufficient to assist our vulnerable population. We look forward to bringing our recommendations and priorities to the City Council this spring. Chris, thanks for your leadership in this process. Just as our community's health is an important priority, so is the economic health of Overland Park. Opportunities for high paying jobs and career advancement are integral to you and your family's financial health and prosperity. It's incumbent upon our community leaders to consider innovative approaches. This has always been a hallmark of Overland Park, one I inherited and embraced when I was elected mayor in 2005. 
Key factors in economic development are access to jobs, education, health care, and our homes. As we know, throughout history, transportation has always been a key factor in providing for a basic level of access for all of these things. Overland Park's transportation system has always been a strength for us, but only because we intentionally planned for it. Now is a critical moment for such planning of our future. That is why we're working with community partners to improve this essential highway that goes through our community. I really appreciate your participation tonight. The Kansas Department of Transportation is leading an extensive community engagement process, looking at modernizing and expanding US 69 Highway from 103rd Street to 179th Street. This stretch of highway is about 50 years old and nearing an end of its useful life. And in terms of congestion on a four lane, worst in the state, in fact, I'll put it out there, it gets a grade of an F today, and it gets worse in the future if we don't do something about it. The preliminary price tag for rebuilding existing lanes and adding a new lane in each direction $300 million. We know that working together and looking for ways the local community can contribute to this project, we will be able to construct the project faster. KDOT is working extensively to reach out to all corners of the community through surveys, focus groups, online community forums, and presentations to neighborhood homes associations, business groups, religious organizations, and more. The community-wide engagement process gauges preferences for financing, understanding, and possible support of the express toll lanes. It is ongoing. KDOT has heard that US 69 is a top priority for this region. One option to finance Overland Park's share of this project, express toll lanes. One new lane in each direction would be the only lane that could be tolled. Express lanes are built in addition to the existing general purpose lanes, providing drivers the choice of using the new lane. Toll charges would only be applied to drivers who voluntarily choose the new free-flowing lanes versus the other two traditional free lanes in each direction. Express lanes are an innovative but proven way to improve congestion, not just now, but in the long term. By law, only the new third lane would qualify as an express toll lane. There would be no toll booths, and the other existing lanes would forever remain free lanes open to everyone. Hundreds of people have already participated in virtual meetings and open houses. This is a significant consideration for the future of Overland Park and US 69. I encourage you to get involved, provide your feedback, and help shape the discussion about the future of this corridor. There's still time for you to get involved. Please visit 69express.org for more information. Our community investments also include neighborhood parks and amenities. Last year, we opened the much anticipated and resoundingly approved Thompson Park in downtown Overland Park. Thank you to those who supported it. Please know your commitment has been rewarded by numerous families, individuals, and groups who visit this very cool and popular amenity. This summer, we launch another major upgrade, Strang Park. Located behind Johnson County's Central Resource Library on 87th Street, improvements include an all-inclusive playground with multi-play elements, sensory play, and a toddler area an entry plaza, pickleball courts, a new trail, and a tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. with excerpts from his I Have a Dream speech. Later this year, we will begin a discussion to update the farmer's market site. We purchased adjacent land and programmed $5.5 million for continued investment in downtown Overland Park. The current pavilion lacks the amenities to serve vendors and thousands of weekly customers. Construction is set to begin in 2023 with the grand opening planned for 2024. 
Our council and staff have faith in our city's future and vitality. So does the private sector. There's a major investment currently under consideration. New jobs and residents may be part of a proposal to reimagine the former Sprint campus. Occidental Management purchased and rebranded this 200-acre campus last year and are naming the redeveloped campus Asperia. For the new Asperia campus, Occidental proposes 1.1 million square feet of new office as well as retail, restaurants, apartments, a hotel, and a water feature. It offers live, work, play amenities. This is the kind of imagining we talked about in forward OP sessions. We look forward to more conversations with neighbors, community, and developer to evaluate the details. Construction also continues at Blue Hawk, an already booming mixed-use destination of residential, retail, healthcare, and entertainment. The latest proposal is a multi-sport space that can be converted into a 4,000-seat indoor facility. If all the necessary pieces come together, construction could commence this year with completion by the end of 2022 or early 2023. I say we have been blessed by all that we have mentioned, and there's still more that I've not had time to mention. But I do want to take a minute to recognize one couple that quietly exemplifies what Overland Park is all about. Jennifer Parker and her husband built a tiny self-service food pantry at the outer edge of their front yard this past year. Neighbors and others have donated food, even diapers to keep it filled. This simple gesture has exceeded all expectations, creating a sense of community. The hands and hearts of Overland Park have given us strength, brought us together, kept doors open for small business owners, and given comfort to the ailing. Honestly, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. In times like these, we are greater due to the sheer number of people dedicated to the community. Your safety, health, and welfare are among my top priorities. Throughout Overland Park's history, beginning with its incorporation through today, we've been fortunate. Many before us have had faith in the direction and leadership of Overland Park. It meant working with the Overland Park Chamber of Commerce, numerous members of the City Council, community and neighborhood leaders, and many, many more. We still do that today. As many of you know, I had the great privilege and experience of participating in team sports. This experience gave me a foundation in the principles of teamwork. It has led me to believe that humble and quiet leadership behind the scenes is a very effective approach. Building the city requires a team mentality, unlike any other. If our success means others receive recognition and the city benefits, I'm good with that. In fact, I think that's one of the greatest secrets to Overland Park's long-standing success. I do not want that recognition for me. That is why it is difficult for me to tell you this is the last State of the City speech I will be delivering. I want recognition for all of us and what we've accomplished together. I want recognition for Overland Park. Our strength comes from community. Teamwork is vital. Without it, well, big wins will only be a distant dream and a sense of community is threatened. Since my election as Ward 3 Council Member in 1995 and subsequently as Mayor, I have come to know many of you and continue to meet new people each and every day. My commitment to this nationally recognized community has been and always will be unwavering. I'm proud to be from here and to have the opportunity to return so much of what has been given to me by this community. I promise to work hard. Let me say that again. I promise to work hard through the remainder of this year when my term expires. 
I assure each and every one of you quality of life and community that you can call home. And when asked where you're from, proudly tell others, I'm from Overland Park, let me tell you about it. God bless our country, our city, and you. Thank you. Mayor, we are indeed proud to call Overland Park home. We thank you, the entire governing body and professional staff for your leadership and vision, particularly this past year. It is with mixed feelings that we mark this as your final state of the city address. While your work is far from over, we've gathered a few community leaders to share their thoughts on this occasion. I'm Suze Parker with Parker Communications Group. Hi, I'm Kevin Hanemichael with BHC Roads. I'm Brenda Sharp with the Reach Healthcare Foundation. Hi, I'm Jim Hicks, former member of the governing body. My name is Henry E. Lyons, I'm president of the NAACP. I'm Carla Engel with Oak Park Mall. I'm Carol Lehman, business liaison at Johnson County Community College. I'm Ken Block and managing principal of Block Real Estate Services. I'm Greg Musil, and I know Carl Gerlock is a friend on many levels. I first met Carl at a neighborhood meeting well before we served together on city council. Mayor Gerlach, you and I have known each other for a long time. I'm thankful for knowing you. And our friendship has spanned several decades. It was always a pleasure to visit with you at the monthly council of mayors meeting. Mayor, you know we served 12 years together. So we want to thank you for a strong partnership that led to many developments over the years. You've been a mayor for all the people. Thank you for always leading with integrity and foresight to imagine the Overland Park of tomorrow and to provide the leadership needed to motivate action. This Overland Park has seen record job growth and business investment. Consistent, committed, constructive common sense. Great service to the community. You've done an amazing job of leading an environment that creates economic development and an enviable quality of life. For providing Johnson County Community College a beautiful, vibrant city to call home. Every decision you made was made with what you thought was in the best interest of the citizens of Overland Park. Mayor, you have successfully guided our community with your unique blend of wit and wisdom. I know you're not done inspiring us all. I'm confident the next 11 months will bring more of the same. We know you're not done yet, Mayor. While your leadership has not yet ended, our firm and all of our tenants and new residents in Overland Park want to thank you for your unwavering support. I'm looking forward to working with you on key projects the rest of this year and beyond. I know you'll continue that great leadership. And we're looking forward to seeing all you will accomplish in 2021. So we want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks so much for what you've done for Overland Park. So, what's next, Carl? Let me know how I can help. Mayor, you've led the public side of our strategic partnership for 16 years, leaving a legacy of nearly 32,000 new jobs, over $2 billion in payroll, more than $1.7 billion in capital investment, and an award-winning quality of life. We look forward to a bright and prosperous future for Overland Park as a result of your leadership. Thanks again to St. Luke's Health System for sponsoring the Mayor's State of the City. Most of all, thank you for attending today. You are why we OP Chamber.